sometimes you love something so much, but you stop doing it because the last time you did it, it was so great that you know you'll never top it. I, I grew up next door to my best friend, Brian, and for the better part of 10 years, we spent almost every single day together. And uh, we were good kids, but we were kind of like puppies. Like when we got bored, we would just destroy things. And uh, unfortunately, we got bored a lot. There was a time that we took uh, 15 strips of these uh, black cat firecrackers and we wrapped them around like six M80s, which are essentially like a quarter stick of dynamite each, and stuffed them into a Millennium Falcon and put it out in my driveway and blew it to smithereens. And that was pretty awesome. And uh, one time we took two uh, gasoline cans, one each, and we poured them all the way down the street and we tried to recreate the Back to the Future scene where the DeLorean pulls in. And we did, it worked. And that was awesome. Uh, but the greatest thing that we ever did was when we came up for the idea of shit bags. Do you guys know what shit bags are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you don't, because we invented them. <laughs> Brian had a little tiny Labrador, sweet dog, Beanie was his dog's name. And, but Beanie would shit all over the, his front yard. So we took these little garden shovels and we took Ziploc sandwich bags and we would put like two or three poo poos in there. And then we'd take a cup of water pour that in, and then you zip it up. And it's essentially like a water balloon, but you might say the secret ingredient is poo-poo. And we would take this, and Brian lived on one of the weirdest corners in Arlington, because it was, it was on the corner of Patrick Henry and 18th Road, and 18th was like any suburban road. Like We would play football out in the middle of the street, you never had to worry about getting hit by a car, it was picket fences. But then Patrick Henry was the longest stretch of flat road in Arlington. And like late at night, you'd hear people drag racing down, and it was crazy. So we would go out and take our shit bag, and then like very strategically place it about two feet off of the dashed white line, and then we would run to the sidewalk where there was this huge elm tree, and we would hide behind the elm tree, and we would watch, because you could see cars coming from like three quarters of a mile, and we'd go, oh, God, here it comes, here it comes. And as the car came down, we would shift around the tree so they couldn't see us, and we would watch it, and then the car would hit the, the, the shit bag, and it would blow up. And we, we always had this like vision of like this like guy in like a short white dress shirt coming home from his dead end job to his miserable family, and he like gets out and he's like, my car's covered in shit. But I think like I think in actuality, like no one ever knew that we did it. And, and actually, like, most of the shit actually like blew back towards Brian's house. <laughs> But if we did like one of these, we did a hundred of them, and it was amazing. And, uh, so this, this one summer day, I'm sitting in my house, I'm watching Prices Right, and I get a knock on the door. So I go open the door, and there's Brian, and Brian's got one hand behind his back, and a look on his face like, I'm about to change your life forever. <laughs> so I'm like, what's up, dude? And he's like, Whew. pulls it out, it's a Ziploc bag. But it's not just any Ziploc bag. I, till this point in my life, I had never seen a one gallon freezer storage bag. It was this big. You know like the one with like the white label on it where you can write like pork chop, September 13th and stick in the freezer. It was like one of those. And I mean it might as well just be like a crushed velvet box with a ring in it. I, mean, like, I felt like he was proposing to me. I was just like, <laughs> I just thought I was just like, oh, yes, absolutely, of course I would. <laughs> so, so we go over and we go into his front yard and we start scooping up beanie poop. And but not like two or three piles. We get like 12 piles in this bag. And then we poured water in it, but not, not just a cup of water. We got a whole pitcher. And I'm holding the bag and I'm like shaking because I'm so excited. And he's pouring, I'm like, dude, go slow, go slow, dude, don't splash on me. So he gets it all the way up and keeps going. It's filled up real big. And then he like very carefully like, you know, seals the bag. And he grabs it and he's like, dude, it's heavy. And I'm like, let me feel, let me feel. And I picked it up, I was like, oh my God. And like, years later, I would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as my savior, but this was the first day that I ever prayed. I said, Lord, if you are willing, would you please deliver us a convertible today? Oh my God. Your humble servant, amen. And I, so we took this gigantic, our supersized shit bag, and we go out in Patrick Henry, and we put it, you know, two feet off of the off the dashed white line. We run to our elm tree and we're waiting and we're hiding. And we see cars coming. We see cars coming. But 
a regular shit bag, our first edition of the shit bag, like that was like the size of your hand. Like you couldn't see it. If you're doing 35, like people would run over it. But this was like the size of a throw pillow. <laughs> like, like a big giant throw pillow in the middle of the... <laughs> so people were seeing it from like 500 yards out. They would just, they're not even like swerving out. They're just drifting off into the other lane like, eh. So we needed something perfectly. We knew like we need all the stars to align. And so we're sitting there, we're hiding behind the tree and we're looking and all of a sudden Brian pokes his head out and he goes, tell me I'm dreaming. I said, what? So I look out there and I went, oh my God, if this is a dream, I don't want to wake up. Because there was a van at the end of Patrick Henry and it was not like the, not the vans they make anymore. It's like, remember the old like A-Team van or like the Mystery Machine in Scooby-Doo? It was like one of those vans. But the door couldn't be closed because it had maybe like eight rolls of carpet coming out of it. Like a, like a quarter of a, a roll of it didn't fit in the car. Like they were going to go do some kind of installation job. And Brian and I just grabbed each other's hands like we were in love. It's like, oh, please, please, it just, I'll do whatever you have. So it starts coming down and we're looking and we start shifting around the tree like we do so that they can't see us. And then you, like, you know in the matrix, like when the time stops and like the air particles are like, suspended in time. That was this moment. I saw this van, like I'm, I'm eye to eye with it. And you can see the driver, he's got his hand up here, but he's not looking ahead. He's over here telling some stupid story to his friend. He's got a big smile on his face. Ah! And his friend's like, ah! And he's super excited. I was like, they're not looking at the road. They're dead on with the shit bag. And Brian and I just grabbed his hands and we're, like, we're doing this. Go back to real time, car goes in, nails it. Nails the shit. It sounded like maybe like 10 balloons popping at once. <laughs> Boom! And Brian go, ah! Then we were so excited, but then we heard the screeching of brakes. And that had never happened before the little shit bag. Nobody ever knew it. This one, they heard it. I and mean, the door was open. It was a... So Brian and I are behind the tree, and we're like, we should probably run. Let's give it a shot. So we run, and like, Literally the first step in, like, if you ever run and you're like, this isn't gonna work. I just, I know, I know it's gonna work. So we decided that we're gonna run, like, maybe like to that pole right there. There's a big pine tree in our neighbor's yard. We'll, we'll run underneath it, plenty of brush, we'll hide ourselves. So we do, we get underneath the tree. And we see it, and the guy's outside now, he's looking at his car, and you can see this gigantic, like, six foot diameter, of, like, splashed water and poo. And Brian and I are sitting there, and we're so scared. And then he starts walking towards us. And Brian looks at me, and he grabs my hand, and he says, no matter what happens, I just want you to know this has been the greatest day of my life. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, ditto. And I wish I didn't say that. I have regretted saying that ever since, but I can't take it back. That's, like, that's what came out, ditto. So now we're sitting underneath the tree, we see the boots come up and we're sitting there like, maybe he doesn't see us, he saw us. Sticks his hands in, he pulls us both out. And he looks at us and he goes, what was that in the middle of the road? And the first thing I think to say is, like, there's a bag of shit with water in it. <laughs> the truth, the truth is always the right answer. <laughs> and suddenly the anger in his face kind of like turned to confusion. He goes, what? what? What was it? And then Brian says, it was a Ziploc bag with dog poop and water. <laughs> and now the confusion kind of turns to like a snicker. And it's cool, because you can tell, like, the guy was like a little mischievous hooligan in his like, young day. And he was like, what? And he goes, all right. Look, I can either take you guys to your parents right now and tell them what happened, or you can give me your word right now that you guys will never do this again. He's like, because you cause an accident or whatever. And I was like, oh, I can have my word. It's like worth nothing to me. I mean, <laughs> you can have my word. And uh, he goes, all right. And so he gets in the car and he pulls off. And Brian and I walk over to the scene of the crime. We're looking at the way. I was just amazed. It's so great. It's like piles of poo in the curb and a shredded bag like 30 yards up. And, we were just looking at it, and we never did another shit bag ever again. But it wasn't because we gave him our word, it was because this was such an amazing experience that we knew we could never top it. <laughs> Thank you.